In this video, we're going to look at the Blasius solution of the boundary layer equations. This video will hold the derivation, and in a subsequent de derivation, we'll look at the solution and some consequences of it. So first we'll look at the boundary layer equations, we'll quickly reduce them to the flat plate boundary layer equations, and then we'll go through a fairly long derivation in order to convert uh, those partial differential equations into ordinary differential equations, which are then very easy to solve, and we'll do that in another video. For a two-dimensional, incompressible, steady state condition with constant properties, a Newtonian fluid, um, we've neglected viscous dissipation, gravity, and any thermal energy generation or conversion from other forms of energy to thermal energy. And we've applied these assumptions that the u-velocity, the velocity parallel to the surface, is much, much greater than the v-velocity perpendicular to the surface, and that changes perpendicular to the surface are much greater than changes in the uh, parallel to the surface. So these are our boundary layer equations for coupled partial differential equations, conservation of mass, conservation of x-momentum, conservation of y-momentum, which is greatly simplified by the boundary layer assumptions, and conservation of energy. These equations may not look like they're greatly simplified, but they are significantly simplified compared to the Navier-Stokes equations. These are much, much easier to solve, and after we go through this heavy lifting of converting these into ordinary differential equations, we can solve them very, very easily and extract lots of useful information. These were the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, in general, we'd have to be doing numerical solutions, and they would be much more complicated as solutions with a lot more work required to get those solutions out. Here's our flow situation. We're talking about a flat plate boundary layer. We have a constant free stream velocity and temperature impinging upon a solid plate, and we'll see the development of a momentum boundary there and a thermal boundary there as the flow adjusts to zero velocity, no slip condition on the surface, and the surface temperature being a constant different than T infinity. For the flat plate, our pressure gradient term that was appearing in our X momentum equation is zero. And of course it's zero because our streamlines far away from this are going to move perfectly straight across here. There's no acceleration or, or deceleration because of the shape of this body. And of course we know that dp dy in the boundary there is equal to zero. And so if the pressure everywhere here is p atmospheric and the streamlines are perfectly straight far away from the body, then the pressure has to be everywhere p infinity and our pressure gradient is zero. So that leads us to thinking about the hydrodynamic solution and the solution of this set of equations for the flat plate boundary there in a laminar flow is called the Blasius solution, as Blasius was the first person to derive this solution. So the hydrodynamic solution uh, involves solving for the velocity profiles and the pressure we don't need to solve for because we've already determined that it's everywhere atmospheric pressure or the ambient pressure. And so we have two partial differential equations in order to solve for the two velocity components u and v. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the conservation of mass equation is, so, is satisfied by definition. And we're going to do that by defining a stream function. We'll define the u-velocity component to be the partial derivative with respect to y of this stream function that we don't know yet. And we'll define the v-velocity component to be minus the uh, partial derivative with respect to x of this stream function. Notice if we substitute these into our conservation of mass equation, it's satisfied by definition. So once we start working with this stream function, this equation is no longer necessary to solve because the conservation is guaranteed by definition in using that stream function. So let's think about that stream function. Um, if we look at the definition of the stream function from our u equation, the stream function psi is then going to be equal to the integral of u dy. That is what our stream function is. Now if you think about drawing a line over here and taking that integral, u dy, what we're doing is calculating the volume flow rate the velocity component times the area per unit width into the screen as we grow across this line. And so that stream function at every point on this line is going to be the volume flow rate between this flat surface and that particular point. So the stream function is related to the volume flow rate. And of course, then if we connect two different lines where we have the same value of psi, we're going to be able to draw streamlines between them because a streamline is a line through which no mass flow passes, no volume flow passes, and if, we, if these two, if we connect a line between points that have the same value of, of psi, the stream function, then that of course by definition is a streamline. And so contours of psi are the streamlines in my flow, and the value of psi at any point above the plate is the volume flow rate between the plate and that point. So this will help us visualize our flow, but let's remember physically what it is. It, these are the streamlines of the flow. Okay, now the big trick in coming up with an ordinary differential equation instead of a partial differential equation is to find a similarity parameter. 
what a similarity parameter is doing is saying, we know we have these different velocity profiles at different x locations along my plate, but perhaps there's a way to scale these profiles so all of these collapse to a single curve. And if these all collapse to a single curve, then I have my solution for every single one of them as soon as I know that single curve. That, by definition, is taking this partial differential equation, this equation that's in multiple variables, and casting it in terms of a one-dimensional problem in terms of my similar similarity parameter. So as long as the physical solution respects that there is a scaling parameter that scales these onto a single curve, this will be a successful approach. And it turns out for this flow, Blasius found that a similarity parameter of this form, eta, being a scaling of my y-coordinate with this group here, is such a similarity parameter. And so we start our process by defining the non, a non-dimensional stream function. So we'll say that there's some function of my similarity parameter eta, which is a scaling of y, is my stream function non-dimensionalized. And this grouping will non-dimensionalize my stream function. Now, what I want to do, then once I have these definitions, remember, psi is related to the derivatives of u and v. What we need to do is express this equation here, my x-momentum equation, in terms of my new stream function, my non-dimensional stream function as a function of my similarity parameter. This is a little bit tedious. I'll leave, leave it for you here if you're interested in the derivation. Otherwise, you can go through this fairly quickly. So the first thing we're going to look at is this term here, the u-velocity. Well, the u-velocity, by definition, is the partial derivative of the stream function with respect to y. I want to have things in terms of eta, so I'm going to expand this with a chain rule. Obviously, d psi dy is d psi d eta d eta dy. And now I have this derivative of my stream function with respect to eta, which is how I want to cast my equations. So d eta dy, taking the definition of eta, I can take that derivative and see that this derivative is the square root of u infinity over nu x. That fills in this term here. And so, taking my definition of my non-dimensional stream function here, I can then express psi in terms of eta. Once I've expressed psi in terms of eta, I can evaluate this part of my chain rule, the derivative of psi with respect to eta, and evaluate that, and I can put those two together in order to get an expression for the u velocity. Now this simplifies quite a bit because my u velocity is simply u infinity times the derivative of psi with respect to eta, which I put in a short in a short form notation f prime of eta, and we'll even drop the of eta later and just say the derivative of f, which is my non-dimensional stream function. So u is simply u infinity times the derivative of my non-dimensional stream function. Next we need to look at the v velocity. It's definitely a little bit more involved. Uh, and the v, we start with our definition. It's defined as negative the partial derivative of our stream function with respect to x. We need to cast that in terms of with respect to eta. So taking the definition of our psi in terms of eta, or the definition of eta rearranged in order to solve for psi, we want to take this derivative with respect to x. Well, we have two terms here, so we'll have to apply a product rule in order to do that. When we apply that product rule, we have the first term times the derivative of this with respect to x, because that's what we're looking for, plus the derivative of the first times f. And notice I've dropped the of eta notation here, so we just have f here, and we just have f here. Well, these can further be simplified. That partial of f with respect to x needs to be expanded into a chain rule like we did previously. And then we can evaluate that d eta dx is equal to this, which simplifies nicely to minus 1 over 2x times eta. If we substitute that into our expression and simplify, we see that the v velocity component is 1 half times this arrangement of variables times eta times the derivative of f minus f itself. Simplify that into our f prime and f notation. There is our definition of the v velocity, which we'll need to substitute in for this term. Next, we look at this term, the partial derivative of u with respect to x. We know that u is equal to u infinity times the first derivative of our non-dimensional stream function, f prime. And so we can take the derivative of that. It's simply, now we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so we have the derivative of f, and then we need d eta dx in order to complete that derivative eta dx we just evaluated, it was minus 1 over 2x, and so we can substitute that in here and get a final expression for this term here in terms of our f's and our eta. Now we'll move on to this term, du dy. du dy, this is the same thing except we're taking derivatives with respect to y. u is u infinity times the derivative of our non-dimensional stream function, and so we now take the same derivative again, u infinity second derivative of f, and now we take d eta dy in evaluating this derivative. d eta dy we can evaluate from our definition of eta here, and of course it's u infinity over new, square root of u infinity over nu x, so du dy is this expression here, 
which will fit in here in our equation. Finally, we have our last term, the second derivative of u with respect to y, appearing in our viscous force term. And we need to express that, again, taking the same starting point, except we're going to take the derivative twice with respect to y. And so when we do that, the first derivative gives us an f prime, and the second derivative gives us this quantity again, and a third derivative of our non-dimensional stream function. So now we have all of the terms u, v, du dx, du dy, and the second root of u with respect to y that we can put into this equation. And if we do that, I won't go through the, the algebra, but it's a straightforward algebra of summer, subbing this in and simplifying it, we find that the ordinary differential equation that we see is this one here. 2 times the third derivative of f plus f times the second derivative of f is equal to 0. And this problem represents our two partial differential equations that we had for conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. So notice we took one first order partial differential equation for conservation of mass and a second order partial differential equation for conservation of momentum and through the use of the similarity parameter, the similarity parameter eta, which collapses all of these profiles onto a single one-dimensional curve, we were able to turn this into a single third-order ordinary differential equation. That is very easy to solve, as we'll see in the subsequent video. First, let's remember what we have. f that appears here is our non-dimensional stream function. f prime is our non-dimensional velocity profile. So when we solve this and we know what f prime is, we'll have our velocity profiles, or u velocity profiles. And f double prime, of course, is the derivative of our velocity profile. And so, of course, when we take the derivative of a velocity profile, it's going to be related to d, the, the du, dy, du dy. It's going to be related to the shear stress in the flow. We'll be able to use that in order to calculate our skin friction coefficient. So now that we have our equation and we know what all of the terms are in our equation, we need our boundary conditions in order to solve it. And so we know that f, f, which is our non-dimensional stream function, of course, at the surface where the velocity is zero, there is no flow. And so the value of our stream function at zero is equal to zero. There's no flow at that plate surface. The next boundary condition that we know is that the velocity is zero at the surface. And so the derivative of f, f prime, is our non-dimensional velocity profile. So f prime of zero is equal to zero. The u velocity is zero at the surface. And finally, our next condition is a little bit annoying one that we're going to have to do some work with when we solve it. But our next condition is that f prime the velocity far away from the plate is equal to u infinity. The derivative of f far away from the plate is equal to 1. And that's all we need for the hydrodynamic solution. But of course, we'd also like to get the solution for the temperature profiles. So we're going to have to go through the same problem with our energy equation, the final partial differential equation that we had to solve. This is a second order partial differential equation. So we'll probably expect to see an ordinary differential equation this is a second order partial differential equation, and let's go through the same process in order to calculate, in order to get an ordinary differential equation representing the energy equation. We're going to start with a non-dimensional temperature. As normal, theta, our non-dimensional temperature, is our temperature anywhere in the field, minus t infinity, over the surface temperature at the plate, minus t infinity. And we'll call that g. We'll use g instead of f for our functions here, but what we want is to have this non-dimensional temperature profile a single function of eta. Eta is our exact same similarity parameter here, and what we want to do is collapse all of these temperature profiles onto a single curve, which will convert this into an ordinary differential equation. So we'll say that our non-dimensional temperature is equal to g, and it will be a function of eta. When we substitute theta definition into our governing equation, it doesn't change. We simply get the t's replacing our theta, and so we're now looking at our non-dimensional equation over here. Now, we already have an expression for u and v. We already derived that in the hydrodynamic solution. Here it is here for the u and v. And so we need to evaluate these three terms in order to simplify this equation. We'll start with the derivative of our non-dimensional temperature with respect to x. And of course, that is a chain rule again. g is our non-dimensional temperature. So the derivative of g with respect to x is dg d eta d eta dx. And we've already evaluated d eta dx. And so we can see that d theta dx is the derivative of g, our non-dimensional temperature, times 1 over minus 2x. Next, we need this term, the derivative of the non-dimensional temperature with respect to y. Same process. We can expand this into a chain rule, dg d eta, d eta dy. We've already evaluated d eta dy. It's this quantity right here. And therefore, d theta dy is g prime times this quantity. Finally, we need the second derivative of theta with respect to y squared. That's simply taking this derivative twice, and so the square root sign uh, goes away, and we get d, d2 theta dy squared is equal to g double prime times u infinity over nu x. 
Now we have all of these expressions here uh, in terms of our f and g functions that we want to solve for that we need to substitute into our governing equation. And again, I'll omit the algebra, but what we'll find when we do that is that we'll get this expression here, that g prime prime plus Prandtl number over 2 times f, and f came from the flow solution. And of course, we expect f from the flow solution to appear in here because we have the u and v velocity in the advective term of our energy equation times the derivative of g being equal to zero. Now again, we need boundary conditions. We need two boundary conditions because this is a second order equation. And the first one, of course, is that our non-dimensional temperature at the surface is equal to zero. Our second one is that our non-dimensional temperature far away from the plate is equal to one. And that will give us the two boundary conditions that we need to solve this. And again, this boundary condition will require a little bit of fiddling when we go to actually solve it, but we'll see that in a subsequent video. So when we put it all together, we have turned our set of five partial differential equations, five coupled partial differential equations for conservation of mass, conservation of momentum in the x direction, conservation of momentum in the y direction, and conservation of energy into this set of two ordinary differential equations, a third order and a second order ordinary differential equation, and we have the five boundary conditions necessary to solve these equations. So in the next video, we'll look at the how to solve this and the and glean a bunch of information from the solution of this set of equations.